Hey, howdy, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to the new setup. Welcome to this. I just turned my whole setup 90 degrees counterclockwise, and now here we are. I got my Mickey Mouse band director shirt on because I am a music teacher, and I'm feeling a little ho ho today with this new setup. Take a look at this. I'm going to go through all of my stuff that I've got here that you see in frame and just kind of explain what everything is. So if you care, this is going to be like a movie review partly because i'm going to talk about all my movies i've got up there so this should be interesting all right let's start with my albums i just put these up these weren't on my stream when i streamed last night but i got four albums i have three more i just don't have frames for them maybe i should get like something that's a little less reflective because it's reflecting the lights i've got around my room but anyway we've got the goat Mastaden Undervaden. I also have regular Mastaden as well, which is right... Where'd it go? Hang on. First Mastaden, not Undervaten. It's right here. That'll go up in the wall in a bit. Every time I look at this, I think this is like a rip or a tear or something. It's not. It's part of a lantern that goes over to the back that you can't see. Uh, also up there, we got Every Sound Has a Color in the Valley of Night by Night Verses. That is my current album of the year, but it's tied with Caligula's Horse. That could change. We'll see. It's also a banger album. Then we got Agent Fresco Destrier, which is my second favorite album of all time, which took over my previous second favorite album of all time, which is now bumped to three, Julie Fowlis Alterum. Nice wide variety of genres here. We got some Thal, we got some instrumental prog, we got some banger, like kind of proggy metalcore, and we got some Celtic folk, as well as pop. This is just straight up like acoustic acoustic pop madeline made to exist with you did a whole video on this one this one's a banger super cool and she's starting to get a whole bunch of new viewers and stuff which is nice i'm seeing her blow up and the elden ring soundtrack i had to get this you know i had to get this well actually i don't know how much getting a non-reflected thing would help because this is just very reflective by itself those are my albums that i've got the physical ones that i own on top of that I've got this, 3D Malekith. I showed this off on stream last night, so if you're on my stream, you saw this. But this is a 3D printed Malekith that my brother printed out for me from Elden Ring. And it's really, really sick. He initially tried to print it all out as one piece, and it kept... One piece? Uh, and it kept... I, I haven't seen any one piece, I just like memeing on it. It kept falling apart and getting horrible and everything but see so now he printed everything out separate pieces and i glued it together and then this is the result it's like 14 inches tall this thing is massive that's just a little white lantern thingy this one just it just lights up i don't that i don't even remember where i got this it's just just a lantern this guy this guy right here his name is phibius the third i'm gonna make a whole video on the thing that he's from but it's uh, something that you'll find out. And you probably don't know what he's from unless you are in a very niche area and you have ever vacationed in Wisconsin Dells. That's all I'm going to say. But he's from that. I'm going to make a whole video on that. I've got a, a bunch of footage from the place that he's from. You'll see. You'll see. I got an automaton, so that'll be fun. Maybe I'll do some automaton covers. If you're in my Discord, I did like a couple few second random ones that were really weird, but they weren't anything professional. I was just kind of like there. Uh, I think, I forget who, but someone dared me to do bleed. It's probably pigeons, honestly. Someone dared me to do bleed on automaton, and it's actually pretty easy. And then this, this is a disc plate of Limgrave. Disc plates are actually pretty cool, though. This is... This is the matte finish one, not not the glossy one. Still looks pretty cool. I would, I think I'd prefer a glossy if I were to get another. But it's pretty sick. Just sticks right up on the wall like that. So this shelf, get to my movies in a second. Oh, let me. I got the the new Riffmaster guitar controller. This thing is super super sick. I I was showing this off in Discord last night as well. Join my Discord, links in the description. You, you probably can't hear this at all, but go listen to my Discord. These buttons are like, like you know those those creamy keyboards that people talk about? That's what these buttons feel like. They feel creamy. They are probably the most satisfying buttons I have ever pressed in my life. It is unbelievable. This thing is premium, and it really feels like it. 
and then the 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 premium like this thing feels so premium there's a bunch of buttons there's like an analog stick on the back of the guitar which is kind of crazy normal whammy bar the normal buttons and everything down here incredible and then there's also more buttons here so you can do like tappies up here and then you know when, when you like do like left hand tappies you can do left hand tappies down here or you can just just to look cool i guess but yeah this is incredibly sick that's super sick i just got it you could definitely gonna do some clone hero streams and stuff like that we'll see i gotta brush up on my skills though because i'm very washed up i tried last night i suck uh then we've got some stuff this is a castle and a dragon that i painted at one of those little pottery places where you go and you paint the thing and then they put it in the furnace overnight and you come pick it up and it's all smooth and it looks cool uh i've also got oh i should i should bring that over here one second i'm gonna get my other thing that i painted i'll probably move some things around on my shelf and put some more of my little painty things up here or just other th i've got some other random objects over there on my dresser uh but this is a little gnome that i painted he's pretty cute his hat's a little scuffed but i i actually kind of like it like that I think I didn't put enough layers of paint on, but it kind of looks kind of kind of kind of cool a little bit. Stick that up there next to the automaton, and then this this was the first one that I painted ever. I love this one, this little like house. It's got a little slot for a candle too. You can stick a candle in there if you want. But this is really really sick. I like how this one turned out. Stick those up there. Then I've got <clears throat> this is um, the master sword encased in resin this looks incredible the camera does not do it justice and it's blurry because this is a 20 dollar or something webcam but this looks super super sick totally worth it i got this off of etsy go check it out look up like i don't know master sword in resin if you want it very very sick not sponsored but <laughs> it's very cool this is from gamer nostalgia Check that out. Link to the Past. This was the very first video game I ever played, and I still play it to this day. In fact, I started this channel doing some Link to the Past randomizers, so go back and watch those videos if you want. Maybe I'll do some more of those someday, I don't know, but not probably not soon. All right, then... No, 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 wait, let me talk about these first. Sorry, I'm, I, there's no format to this, I'm just kind of going. And then this I got from a glass blowing place in Silver Dollar City, which is in Missouri. You ever been there? But it's a little piano. It's a glass blown piano with a little like mushroom stool. It's pretty sick. A little glass piano with a mushroom stool. But I'm always a big fan of glass art and looking, excuse me, looking at people make glass art and things like that. This goes hard. Very cool. I saw this and I was like, I have to get it. I, I, I play piano, you know? Standard D&D &D dice tower, 3D printed that my brother made for me as well same as malekith i haven't played DD with this yet but whenever i do i'll use it so i'm sure it works just like a normal dice tower nothing too special but it's here and then we're gonna get into all of my movies and shows and everything that i got some stuff is just not stuff of note like i'm not gonna talk about everything on the shelf uh, especially because the the white cap you see down here is like nyquil and dayquil from when i was sick <laughs> so i've still gotta organize some of this stuff on here but i'm gonna talk about uh, the movies and shows that I've got here. I'm going to start off by saying Better Call Saul is my favorite show of all time, but I do not own a physical copy of it because the one physical collection of the whole thing that does exist is horrible quality and not like screen quality, but build quality. Like the case is very flimsy and it falls apart and everybody's complaining about how the discs are all over the place and scratched up. So I don't want to buy it unless there's a good edition of it, of it that's out there, and there is not currently, so very unfortunate, very sad. I do not own my favorite show of all time. However, I own some other pretty good shows and movies, so let me go through these. This is a box for my Quest 3, ignore that. One of the goats of children's animations, Avatar and Korra. These came in a box set together that I found on ebay for like a really cheap price surprisingly i think it was like 40 bucks or something for both of these which is kind of crazy i got uh just to have the full collection i got all the all the conjuring universe movies plus the nun 2 because it doesn't come in this box collection uh these movies they're not all good but they're just they're fun they're fun horror movies i like things that are maybe not the best but fun that's why dark souls 2 is one of my favorite FromSoft games and you can disagree but 
you're going to see a lot of me liking things that might not be the best, but are just fun. And that's kind of how I roll. Another GOAT of animation, Gravity Falls, the complete series. This show was great. I watched this when I was younger, and it was amazing. When did this come out? Like, the original show. I, I don't even remember. Like, sometime in the 2010s. And then I watched it, and yeah, this show is incredible. It starts off as kind of just like your average run-of-the-mill Disney show, and then it gets wild by the end. It's it's really, really good writing, actually. I've got all the Harry Potter movies in 4K. I don't need to show you all of these, but they've they've got like really cool, like these steelbook covers. They have like really cool matte finish designs on the front. They're really, really sick. Uh, then I've got collection of all the Indiana Jones movies, just just for fun, just to have it. Then I've got uh, the, the Justice League trilogy, which has Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and Zack Snyder's Justice League. I love these movies. Again, they're not the best, but they're fun, and I, I really do like them. I never saw the theatrical edition of Batman v Superman. I only saw the Ultimate Edition, which is the best edition, obviously. They cut out a lot in the theatrical edition, apparently, from what I've heard. But the Ultimate Edition is really, really good. Then I've got the Mummy Trilogy. Again, not the best set of movies, but man, these are nostalgic, and they're really fun. I told you, it's kind of it's kind of a theme. I just love watching these movies. I love Egypt. I love the whole Egypt aesthetic. I love Brendan Fraser. They're all so good. Is it Fraser or Fraser? I always said it Fraser, but... I don't know. It's spelled Fraser? Maybe it's pronounced Fraser? I actually don't know. Somebody tell me if you know. I never bothered to actually check. And then I have probably the most underrated trilogy ever. This is Planet of the Apes. Rise, Dawn, War. Please go watch these movies if you have not already. Kingdom for the Planet of the Apes just came out. I have not seen that one yet, but I pre-ordered the Steelbook. It'll be here at the end of the month. These movies are unbelievable. The story, the soundtrack, the characters, just everything about them is top-notch, and nobody talks about these movies. I feel like with Kingdom, a lot of people started to get into them and check them out for the first time, but this is probably the most underrated trilogy of all time. When people start talking about the greatest trilogies, obviously Lord of the Rings gets brought up, Star Wars, uh, other ones that I'm forgetting, but these get left out, and these should be in... You should be in the conversation for that. Uh, just to finish off, the these are just like a eight. I'm not gonna talk about my books, but this to finish off the the collections. I've got Lord of the Rings, the Blu-ray extended editions, and the 4K extended ed editions. Now I have both of these because the Blu-ray comes with the 26 hours of bonus features, and this does not. This has just the movies, but it's in 4K and it looks really good. Some scenes were like color changed and stuff, which is a little bit strange, but overall very, very good. And then I've got the exact same thing for The Hobbit. Again, the extended editions with the bonus features and everything, all the appendices and the 4K versions of The Hobbit. Not the best trilogy, but it's a lot of fun. Again, it's another one of those things that is not the greatest, but I just really love. Then we have this. Irish Folklore Trilogy. If you have not seen these movies, you need to do yourself a favor and go see these movies. This is a whole like boxed set. But we have The Secret of Kells, Song of the Sea, which is probably the best of the three, and Wolf Walkers. These movies are insane, plus some bonus stuff. These movies are insane. I love just Irish stuff because I'm, I'm Irish and my family's Irish. Obviously my family's Irish. But... I love just the Irish history and Irish heritage and all that stuff. And these movies are like crack for somebody who loves just Ireland and Irish folklore and stuff like that. These movies are so good. And then to finish off the, the collections, I have the entirety of The Walking Dead. I think it's 60 discs in here. <clears throat> Something like that. <clears throat> Man, my throat's all messed up today. Sorry. But yeah, this is the entire show. Again, not the best show. The whole thing is not even all that very good throughout. But it has a vibe to it that is just unmatched in any other show. And I love it so much for that vibe. So I have the box set of the entire show. And I'm rewatching it. And 
it's kind of cheesy at times but man it's got that vibe and it's just fun and i i enjoy it even when it's cheesy and even not that great i still like it so i have i have it i'm gonna go through all my, all my movies so i have them kind of in alphabetical order here starting off numerically 1917 probably my favorite war movie ever it even said it has a little tagline one of the best war movies of all time yeah they were cooking with this. This whole movie, if you don't know, if you haven't seen this show, show it's, a, it's a movie. If you haven't seen this, it's shot like a one take. There's there's one part where like the main character gets knocked out and he wakes up again. So that's obviously a cut. But there's a lot of really strategic cuts. Like it'll pass a tree and then you can tell that's okay. That's where they cut. But the whole movie is filmed to look like a one take minus the part where he gets knocked out and then he wakes up and it's nighttime. But this is one of the best war movies ever. And it just focuses on a dude trying to bring a message to his the, his allies across enemy lines. And it's incredible. The way that it's shot and the way that everything plays out and the story and by the end of it you're like in tears. It's so good. It's one of the best movies just ever, I think. And definitely my favorite war movie of all time. And then we have Alita Battle Angel. This movie is really, really good. The CGI is incredible. The story is really good. It's just overall great sci-fi. I'm not even the biggest sci-fi fan, but I love this movie and it never got a sequel. And maybe it will get a sequel at some point, but it hasn't gotten one yet. And it ends on a cliffhanger, which is kind of disappointing, but it's still a really, really good movie. I don't, I, I'm not going to call movies bad because they end on cliffhangers. A lot of movie or a lot of, not a lot of movies, a lot of people thought that Across the Spider-Verse was bad because it ended on a cliffhanger. I love that. It had me hyped for the next movie. I cannot wait for the, the third movie in the trilogy. I'm going to try to see if there's like a boxed set of that trilogy when it's done because that's amazing. But I don't own any of those movies, but they would be up there. This is up there though. Alita Battle Angel. Ends on a cliffhanger. Just like that, but it's like the Spider-Verse movies, that's why I brought it up. Still a great movie. A lot of fun. Great CGI. Just overall, really solid. Season 1 of Andor. Steelbook. Take a look at that. Pretty sick. I have not actually watched this yet. I have yet to see this. But I bought it because everyone says how good it is. And I just want to watch it in 4K. And I don't have Disney Plus and I'm not planning on buying Disney Plus. So I'd rather buy this and own it physically than do that. That's kind of the theme of why I bought all these and everything is because I don't like paying for streaming services. I don't have any streaming services. If I want to watch something... I will either find a way to watch it or I'll buy it physically if, if it's really good like I've heard this is. So that's why I have this. I have strong opinions about Star Wars and you'll see that later on. Next up, Arrival. Another movie that I've heard is really, really good, but I haven't seen. You'll see some of these I haven't watched yet, but I bought them because they're really good and they look like I'd be... So they look like I, I can't talk to they look like something that I would like so this is uh Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner and Forrest Whitaker three huge actors but I heard this movie is great I bought this specifically because this is a Denis Villeneuve movie I'm pretty sure let me just make sure I'm not lying right now yes it's a Denis Villeneuve movie and or Denis Villeneuve however you say his name I don't know and all of his movies that I've seen are great. Dune, Sicario, like they're all so good. So why would this be any different basically is my, my thought process. So I bought this, love it. Maybe, we'll see. Next up, another movie that's not all the best, but it's really, really fun. Aquaman. This movie visually is incredible. The colors are so good. And I know I'm like ADHD brain, ooh, colors are good, but you gotta like watch this movie. You need to watch the movie. This is a James Wan film. If you know James Wan, he did he did the Conjuring movies and uh, Insidious and the first Saw movie, stuff like that. He's really, really good with horror movies. And there's some horror elements. There's a scene, if you know the trench scene in this movie, it's very well shot. There's an incredible shot where Aquaman and Mira are diving to like down the trench and they're being chased by all these like things, these creepy creatures and it's pitch black except for the light of their uh what's it called like their red fuse as they're diving down and there's a huge wide shot of like and i think like like lightning strikes and you see like them in the fuse 
like as this tiny little speck and there's like hundreds of creatures swarming them it's insane it's really really well shot this movie is just all around so much fun i love this movie it's a banger great time great fun movie great superhero movie just to kind of turn your brain off and just enjoy a really fun superhero movie highly recommend then we've got one of the best action movies ever baby driver if you like action movies and you like music and you have not seen this movie what is wrong with you go see this movie this is edgar wright he's the same guy who did scott pilgrim and the cornetto trilogy if you know that as well um that's uh the world's end Shaun of the dead and uh what's the third hot fuzz hot fuzz those movies uh he also did last night in soho some great set of movies all really good movies this might be one of his best though the way that music is implemented in this movie is incredible the music and the action line up and a lot of the times like the action is happening on beat to the to the music the intro sequence of this movie after the the first car scene is incredible because the words to the music appear in the environment and it's like one long one take shot it's so so good it's such a good movie please go watch this movie if you haven't it's amazing the soundtrack is incredible overall it's one of the best action movies ever then up next we've got barbie this was a movie i did not expect to like but i ended up loving and it was it's one of the funniest movies i've ever seen in my life <laughs> i did not expect to think this movie was this but good my sister raved about it she said it was one of the funniest movies she's ever seen i'm like all right i'll go see it i was dying laughing so much during this movie in the theater. I highly recommend this to anybody, even if it seems like it's not gonna be your thing. It's not just a movie about just Barbie doing Barbie things. It's so funny. All the Ken stuff is hilarious, and all of Barbie out of her element stuff is really funny too, but it's mostly Ken and his like physical comedy with his like, he's, he's like a, I don't know, he's just a weird dude with good intentions but he kind of gets mixed up with with like some weirdness and he's he's just he's so funny great movie please go watch this if you haven't already one of the best movies from last year incredible then we've got oh no wait wait was this was hang on was this this year am i insane this was 2024 wasn't it or was it not was that i i do i don't even remember no 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 this was no this was last year I'm going I'm going crazy. I don't remember actually. See, every time I try to think of when things came out since 2020, my brain is gone. I can't remember everything like 2020 to now all kind of blends together because of COVID. I don't remember most of it. Anyway, go watch this movie. Very good. Arguably the best superhero movie ever. This is The Batman, Matt Reeves, The Batman. I like this better than the Dark Knight movies. It's incredible. It's so well shot. The soundtrack is amazing. I listened to the soundtrack before I saw the movie, and that made me love it even more, especially during the car chase scene with Penguin. This soundtrack is incredible. That and like the ending sequence soundtrack, it's so good. It takes inspiration from Nirvana, Something in the Way, and a lot of the soundtrack uses that chord progression throughout. Unbelievably good soundtrack. And the whole movie as well is, is just so good. I got the 4K steelbook of this. The whole steelbook looks just super, super sick. It's got like the Riddler designs all over it. So good. It's such a stupidly good movie for no reason. Can't wait for the sequel. Then next up, we have one of the best stop motion movies ever. Not my favorite, but possibly arguably the best. Still, it's not my favorite stop motion movie, but it's one of the best. This is Coraline, obviously. If you have not seen Coraline, Please do yourself a favor and go see this movie. This is the 4K steelbook of this. I love getting steelbooks. They're just so cool. And it is so well done. This is by Leica Studios, which did other movies such as Kubo and the Two Strings and other ones. Whenever Leica does a movie, they do not miss. If you have not seen this, please go check it out. Leica does stop motion stuff. Every movie they have done is so good. Stop motion is my favorite animation medium, and just the art of this is so good. I think I like it most because of the skill it takes to pull off and the time it takes to create the models and put everything together. It's just so well done. It's such interesting art. It's such a different and unique art form, and I just love it so much for that. Another great movie, Coraline. 
Then we got, of course, I had to get these. This is Dune, the two film collection. It's got both of them. Can't wait for Dune Messiah whenever that comes. I wonder if it'll be called Dune Part 3 or if it will be called Dune Messiah. But these movies are incredible. I didn't see the first Dune in theaters, actually. And I wish I did because it's so good. The first movie is admittedly a little bit slow, but I love slow. You'll, you'll see that later. <laughs> but I love slow stuff that really builds to something incredible. Or even slow stuff that is just atmospheric and this is incredibly atmospheric again i'm not into sci-fi that much but this scratches that itch this has something about it that just makes me love it even though i don't love sci-fi all that much this just goes so hard these two movies are so good the storytelling the characters everything about it is incredible i read the book as well the book is really good there's some changes to the books in here but i think overall the changes that Denis Villeneuve made was really really well done again same director as the arrival and like sicar excuse me sicario if you've seen those movies he never misses with his movies these are pure art and if you have tiktok adhd brain the, the first one's a little bit slow to get through but if you can get through it the second one's a lot more faster paced and it's so good it's shot so 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 well and that's something i've been getting into as well as like the way movies are shot I haven't really thought about that until the last few years. I started learning more about like how shot compositions works and like a little bit of that because I got more interested in things like that. And this movie is shot so well. The soundtrack as well, amazing. If you have not heard the soundtrack, yes, you have. You've seen it somewhere. You've heard it in memes. It's all over the place. It's unbelievable. This is just one of the greatest sci-fi movies of all time. One of the greatest series and i am sure with the release of dune messiah and if he continues the story doing more of it after that then i'm sure they're just going to be just as good as the as these first two which are the, the adaptation of the first book after this we have an extremely underrated sci-fi movie this movie does not get enough love this is edge of tomorrow this movie emily blunt tom cruise a little bit of time loop time travel aliens come to earth kind of stuff this i saw in high school i saw this in a tv video class and it blew me away the whole storyline of this i had never seen anything like it at the time the basic premise of it is that these aliens come and they kill a bunch of people and but tom cruise's character wakes up and it's a groundhog day scenario he keeps waking up and reliving the same day over and over again when the aliens come and he has to figure out how to stop them and it's so well done and the aliens have such a really sick design they're like they're like spidery and spindly but also like weirdly they're they're very fast and they're very like <laughs> I, I can't describe what they're like because there's no movie aliens that are quite like these they're just so interesting and so unique please go watch this movie this is another amazing movie that's one of the best sci-fi films of all time. Again, if I have any sci-fi up here, it's because it's amazing sci-fi. I'm, I'm not the biggest sci-fi guy. I'm more of a medieval fantasy guy. But this is incredible. Please go watch this movie. One of, one of my favorite sci-fi movies ever. Just because it was the first... I think the first real sci-fi movie that I saw that made me, like, actually obsessed with it. Like, obsessed with a sci-fi movie. This movie is incredible. My favorite movie of all time. I mentioned this on stream... There it is. Fantastic Mr. Fox. This is another stop motion movie. This is a Wes Anderson film. He's a bit of a quirky director. He's got some directorial quirks, but I think the heart of this movie and what makes me love it the most is the color palette, the vibes, and the dialogue. The voice acting cast in here is stacked. You have like Meryl Streep, George Clooney, Owen Wilson, other people who I can't remember at the time, but those are like three that come to mind. It is incredible how much voice talent is in this movie. I'm trying to see if I can, if I can find, uh, yeah, Jason Schwartzman, yeah, Bill Murray, Willem Dafoe, Owen Wilson. There's, there's so much insane celebrity acting here. And the thing with some of the, like, you know, celebrities doing voice acting, Chris Pratt, for example, like, a lot of the time, it's not always the best, but here everybody's performance is so good that you forget that they are who they are. 
there's straight up just like an Owen Wilson character and you forget that it's Owen Wilson. You're kind of like, oh, it's Owen Wilson. And you just forget because everybody does such a good job voicing this. George Clooney does a great job voicing Mr. Fox. He, he's one of the standouts. Uh, another standout is Willem Dafoe as the rat. Incredible job. He's such a memorable character, even though he has like five minutes of screen time total, probably. Everybody is so unbelievably talented in this movie. It is hilarious. It is such a funny movie. It's such a heartwarming movie. There's a lot of sad parts in this movie. There's not like, it's not the kind of movie that you go away and you 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 finish watching and you're like crying like that was so sad. It's not that kind of sad. It's just there's some sad moments, but they're really heartfelt. They're really touching. They're really emotional. And the overall vibe of this movie and just the atmosphere and the fall aesthetic. I'll talk about this again with another one of my favorite things that I've got up here. The fall aesthetic is my thing. I love, dude, orange, orange is my favorite color. I love just fall in general. It's my favorite season. I love fall related things. And this movie is a masterpiece. Again, this this is my favorite stop motion movie. I know I said Coraline was, is probably objectively the best if you were talking just by objective measures, but this is my favorite. This is so good. Everything about it is 10 out of 10, masterful. There isn't a, a single thing I dislike about this movie. Soundtrack is great. The visuals are really, really good. There's like a long one take shot sequence as like Mr. and Mrs. Fox, like right in the beginning of the movie, as they're like running through this farm. It's like, how do you do a one take shot in stop motion that well? It's, it's really crazy how well this is shot. But you need to do yourself a favor and watch this movie because this deserves so much more hype than it gets. It's incredible. This is my favorite movie of all time. Then we get to one of the best shows ever. This is The Haunting of Hill House. Classic. I tried to take these stickers off. I took one off the back here and it just made it very sticky. There's a bunch of residue here. And so I just gave up and I didn't. Just, I don't know why. That, like I could just take it off and just do this. But it's still sticky on the back here. It's annoying. Anyway, I hate when they put stickers on things. Like, can you just have something without a bunch of stickers on it? Anyway, this is Haunting of Hill House by uh, Mike Flanagan. He is one of the best horror directors out there. He directed movies like Oculus and Hush, and he's got a bunch of other shows on Netflix. He did this. He did Haunting of Bly Manor. He did, more recently, uh, The Fall of the House of Usher, which is incredible. I think that's one of his, one of his best works, maybe uh, his second best behind Hill House. This is still my favorite. Oh, what, uh, Midnight Mass. It's another one he did. This is still my favorite work of his, but House of Usher is a very close second. Please go watch that on Netflix too if you haven't. This is so good. Just the way it's shot, the storytelling, the, the character writing, unbelievably good story right here in this. The book as well. I'm going to talk about this. I'm not going to talk about all my books because I don't have that many books, but the book is right here. I have this. Haunting of Hill House, Shirley Jackson. I don't know what kind of crack she wrote into this book, but her writing is unbelievable. This is one of the best, the, one of the best just books in general. Not only one of the best horror books, but this is one of the best books, period. It is incredible. The way that she describes the house is captivating. It makes you feel like you're there and it gives this sense of dread. There's never really any moments that are particularly scary in the book, but there's an overwhelming sense of dread throughout the entire thing once they get to the house and things start happening. It's unbelievable. This is very, very different from the show though. The show is about five kids who uh, their mother is like possessed or something and so they have to leave Hill House and then they're drawn back to the house after one of the siblings kills herself at the house again. And so the, the house is like an oppressive force there. But this is about a professor who wants to prove that it's been a few years since I read. I'm trying to think. He wants to prove that this house is haunted. So he invites some people to come to the house and live with him for like a week and prove that it's haunted or something of that nature. And so they come and the house messes with them and things like that. And and you'll see this book was written in like, I, I don't want to lie. I'm just going to straight up lie. This book was written in 1959. There's also a movie adaptation from like the 60s. That's pretty good. You should watch that as well. That's way more faithful to the book. However, this and the show, the Mike Flanagan show, could not be more separate. 
they are nothing alike other than there is a house and maybe one or two or three of the characters share some names that is where the similarities end this however is incredible as an adaptation the show sucks it's nothing like the book but as a show in general mike flanagan crafted something amazing the book not like the show but still amazing in its own right and this is how you do horror literature incredible book right here it's all about atmosphere because you can't really do jump scares in books as well as you can in a movie and it's harder to do stuff like that but books are really really good at creating atmosphere and that's what this book has is atmosphere while we're on the topic of book besides having some classics like harry potter i got a percy jackson box set lord of the rings I want to talk about my favorite book of all time. This is Watership Down by Richard Adams. This has that sort of country fall aesthetic that I praised in Fantastic Mr. Fox. This is kind of the same thing. It's got, it, it's about a bunch of animals, uh, mainly rabbits. The Watership Down, which is like the, 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 the down of rabbits that are the main focus of the story. Their home is about to be destroyed by humans who are coming in to bulldoze it and like make something there. And so a group of rabbits venture off to find a new home. And that's what this is about. They run into some other downs. They come into contact with some other animals. There's like a farm, but just overall the storytelling and the writing and just the memorable quotes from this are incredible. Richard Adams writing style is so good. This is like a, a, limited edition thing I found on Etsy or something, I, I think. But I I just I needed to have this book in the prettiest looking print possible. And this is gorgeous. The first line, not to be a nerd or anything, but the first line says the primroses were over. And just that line alone tells you so much just in that first line. As like just one first initial setup line, the primroses were over. And it tells you so much about the world and like what you're about to get into and the the setting and it's just instead of being like it was it was the end of the summer or whatever and like and the the flowers started to die it's just the primroses were over and a lot of his writing is kind of like that where it's just very descriptive in the simplest of ways and it works so well it's incredible i love this book this is my favorite book of all time and i've got it here enough about the books let's move on to the movies because we got way more to talk about this is the haunted mansion which just came out got the 4k steel book of this it's a little bit like you can see in the reflection it's kind of raised so there's some texture to it very nice very nice this movie as a haunted mansion fan was pretty much everything i wanted it to be it was it had a little bit of that disney cheese but it's still really really good as opposed to like the eddie murphy movie which was which a lot of people enjoy but I think as a Haunted Mansion fan, it sucked. It was nothing like the mansion. It didn't use any of the lore. This uses a lot of lore from the mansion. I'm a big Haunted Mansion nerd, and I read a bunch of books about it. I went on the ride a million bajillion times at Disney World and land. I went to land once though, but this whole movie is really, really well done for fans of the Haunted Mansion who know the lore and know the different ghosts and things like that. This movie does it justice. And I just had to buy the steelbook of this because it's it's so good. Then we get to another one of the best trilogies of all time. This is How to Train Your Dragon. These movies are severely underrated as well. I think these get brought up a little bit more in the question or in the conversation with the greatest trilogies of all time, more than Planet of the Apes does, but these movies are still really good. The overall, like the the graphics of the CGI, the way that it's done is so good. It feels very ahead of its time, even for the first movie. But going from the first to the second to the third, if you watch these three, like back to back, it is such an upgrade. The animation quality from the first movie to the third is unbelievable. And owning them all in 4K, you can see it even better. These movies are just probably one of the best 3D animated movies of all times. The, I, I'm putting S's on things that shouldn't and whatever, but <laughs> these are so good. Please go watch them. Very underrated, and they deserve more hype. I'm pretty sure the first movie has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's not the first movie. This is the first movie. <laughs> pretty sure the first movie has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, and it is it is the best. Initially, I remember two being the best, but on, on a rewatch just a few months ago, 
one is one is the best. The other two are very, very close, though. Then we get to uh, another one of the best standalone, standalone 3D animated movies of all time, The Incredibles. I hate the second movie. It really messed with a lot of the characters. It can, there's a lot of like character assassination and just unnecessary things, and just it was just not as good as the first movie. So. This, however, though, is a masterpiece. This is one of the best Disney movies ever. I know it's Pixar, but like definitely the best Pixar movie. But it's very, very, very solid. I love it so much. It's a masterpiece, in my opinion. It is the best Fantastic Four movie, as a bunch of people have said. It's so good. I'm pretty sure you've all seen it by now. And you know how good it is. But if you haven't seen it in a while, go watch it again. It's better than you remember. As an adult, this movie gets better and better the more you watch it. As a kid, I loved it. But as an adult, it's even better than I remember. The storytelling is so good. And some of the stuff you're like, how is this in a kid's movie? What in the world? Like, there's some crazy stuff in here that shouldn't be in a kid's movie, but it is. And I, I really, really like stuff like that, where they, they take the kid's movie medium and they really do some great... I bonked my mic. They really do some great stuff with it and they push the boundaries of what kid's movie or kid's entertainment can be and just have really solid storytelling that is still family friendly. For the most part, this movie kind of pushes some boundaries. Maybe to make your younger kids watch this, because there's some like, I don't know, like, uh, some some violent stuff in here, like self killing and <laughs> and like uh, blowing people up and m genocide of of superheroes and you know some stuff. Then we get to the best sci fi movie ever made, in my opinion, and I think a lot of you will agree with this: Interstellar. <laughs> This movie, I cannot praise this movie enough. I don't think I have ever bawled as hard as I have in this movie in any movie ever. The story the storytelling in this movie and the characters is what drives it, and the music especially. I went into this movie expecting it to be an epic space movie. It's really not. There's some epic stuff that happens. Yeah, there's some great shots. The, the, the CGI is incredible. It looks so real. It's so well shot. But the main heart of this movie is the relationships between the characters and how that progresses over the course of the film. Please go watch this movie if you haven't. I'm not going to spoil anything about it, but please, please watch this movie. This is a 10 out of 10 masterpiece. My favorite sci-fi movie ever. It's just unbelievably good. Then we have my favorite horror movies ever. The new It movies. Again, I'm a sucker for things that are just like very character focused and just have a really, really good story. And this is that it's not all that scary. It's, it's pretty scary at sometimes, but I, I don't really get scared at horror movies that much anymore. There's one coming up that though, that I will mention that I, I get a little bit scared at every time I watch it. I've not seen it that many times, but these are very, very good. The story is really good. If you watch them back to back, it's, uh, it's an experience. Please go see this movie. Bill Skarsgård is great as Pennywise. All of the kid actors are great. And then the adult actors that play them in the second movie are still really good. Very solid horror duology here with these two movies. I love them. Amazing. Then we have possibly the most underrated sci-fi movie ever. Ever. Nobody talks about this. John Carter. This movie goes so stupid hard. I saw this like three times in the theaters and it got better and better every time. This is, I think, the only movie to have like such an epic fight sequence, but I'm in tears the entire fight sequence. I don't know what other movie did that to me. I don't, I don't think there is another movie that has an epic fight sequence with like one man versus hundreds, if not thousands of enemies. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but like one man versus an army, but you're in tears the whole time because of the story implication and like the characters and how well this is written. This movie is uh, a Disney failure. Disney wanted this to fail. Their marketing was horrendous. Just everything about it was not good, but the movie itself is a hidden gem masterpiece. I can't talk. Please go see this movie. Please, please do yourself a favor. Watch this. It, it, Pretty sure it's on Disney Plus. If you have Disney Plus or something, just go, just go watch it. It's like it's 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 just over two hours. Please go watch this movie. Please, 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 please. I cannot stress this enough. You need to watch this movie. 
It is so good. The CGI is incredible. The character relationships is incredible. The story is so well done, especially the ending. The ending blew me away when I first saw this in theaters. And that's really what made me love it so much is just the ending and the implications of that and like how it how it ties everything together. It's so good. <laughs> Please go watch this movie. Then we have my favorite comedy of all time. The Lego Batman movie. This is another movie that I didn't expect to like that much on first watch. But I saw this in theaters and I was in hysterics the entire time. This is one of the funniest movies I have ever seen in my life. It is exactly my brand of comedy. It's it's kind of borderline stupid, but it's almost really smart in how stupid it is with some of the jokes in here. It's unbelievably good. I saw the Lego movie. I thought the Lego movie was really, really good, but this passes the Lego movie in terms of how funny it is. It is unbelievable. The story isn't even the best part. Like the story, I don't even really remember the story. All I remember is how stupidly funny the humor in this movie is. It's very, very good. Another one that you should definitely watch. Go check that out. Then we got one. This this one, um, if you're a Moist Critical fan, slash Charlie, slash Penguin Z Zero, slash him, if you're a fan of him, you've probably heard him talk about this one. And this one, I gotta say, this is Moonfall. He's right about this. This is one of the worst movies ever. But it's so entertaining. <laughs> this is one of the most entertaining bad movies you'll ever see. The visuals are actually incredible. The visuals are really, really good. This is a Roland Emmerich film. This is like the same guy who did uh, Independence Day, pretty sure, unless I'm crazy, and uh, other disaster movies, things like that. He's a disaster movie guy. And this is so much fun. The story is wildly insane. The overall plot is just it doesn't really make much sense it's a really stupid movie but it's so entertaining to watch it is so fast-paced it is so interesting to just look at because the again the visuals are really really good even though the movie itself sucks but the visuals are so good like i would watch this many many times i'm gonna i'm gonna go maybe watch it tonight i'll probably watch it again it's so good please watch this movie it's so it's so bad it's good this is the perfect so bad it's good movie then we have another amazing masterpiece of stop motion animation. This is Marcel the Shell with shoes on. This is an A24 movie, but A24 does horror, you know, mostly. This is not horror. This is a stop motion movie about a little shell who is trying to find his family. And it is very, very heartwarming. It's very cute. It's a very feel good movie. I love it. Please go do yourself a favor and watch this. It's one of the best stop motion movies ever. It's it's just so well done. Very well done. Please go watch. It. Next up, we have uh, one more trilogy to talk about. This is Narnia. Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Prince Caspian, Voyage of the Dawn Treader. These two movies aren't quite as good as Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, but I still have them just to complete the collection because these movies mean so much to me. These were... Uh, the, the books were one of the first book series that I ever read. My mom would read it to us when we were little. And I have such fond memories of reading the books and getting super into the story and the lore of the books. And then I saw the movie and it like blew my mind with how good a movie could be. I think this is what made me fall in love with medieval fantasy. And then Lord of the Rings only solidified that. Lord of the Rings perfected my love of medieval fantasy, but this is what started. It was reading these books when I was little and then getting so hyped when the movie came out and finally watching the movie when that came out. This was, it's so good. Please, this is the best of the trilogy. These are still okay. They're still worth a watch just because they're they're fun, but they're not as good as Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Another high, highly recommended movie for me. Well, all these are highly recommended, obviously, because I, I bought them. I wouldn't pay money for bad movies. Unless it's Moonfall. Then we go to another, I'm going to praise this for the fall aesthetic. I've talked about this before. Fall aesthetic, Over the Garden Wall. This is a miniseries that premiered on Cartoon Network in the 2010s. I forget when specifically. Uh, 2015. This is a mini series. It is 10 10 minute episodes. It's very short. It's basically just a movie. You can watch this in one sitting. It is incredible. What they do with such a short amount of runtime, what they do with the story is nothing short of masterful. They were on they were on crunch. They were like they were told they had to shorten their show. It, they had to cut a bunch of stuff out. They had to change a whole bunch of things. It had a very troubled development, but what came out of that was a masterpiece. And if you have not seen this show, 
This is one of my favorite shows of all time. This is my second show, my second favorite show of all time behind Better Call Saul. And then Attack on Titan's up there as well. I want to get like a whole box set of that too, because Attack on Titan is just amazing. But I'm not going to pay 60 bucks for every individual half season because that's stupid. I just want a box set of the entire show, which probably is never coming. So I'll probably never own it, which sucks, but who cares? Whatever. This show, however, this is my second favorite show ever. If you can even call it a show because the whole thing is like under two hours. Please go watch this if you haven't. I think it's on Hulu. It's great. It's a masterpiece. 10 out of 10. Great storytelling. The music. The the implications. And also, this is one of the best... Not even just movies or shows, but like one of the best things ever to re-watch and revisit. Every time I watch this, again and again, I've seen this countless times over the years. Every time I rewatch this, I notice something new about it. There's something I didn't notice before. There's some new story implication. There's some lore I didn't notice. There's something in the background that that hints at what's coming next. And the very first few seconds of this spoil the entire show. If you don't know what's coming, you don't see it and you don't really it doesn't click in your head as anything. But after the show, you'll you'll go back and you watch it again and you start to see everything make sense. It all clicks into place. But on first watch, it's very disjointed. It's very jumbled. It's very it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it all clicks into place as you can watch it more and more and more. That this is that's why I love this so much. It's so special. Then we get to a weird movie, but still a banger. This is the Polar Express. It's very uncanny valley. It's very strange, but it's very nostalgic. We would watch this movie all the time when I was younger. This is my favorite Christmas movie ever. It just encapsulates Christmas in a movie. This is the perfect Christmas movie in my opinion. It's so good incredible storytelling the cgi is really weird it's in that kind of era of like weird like uncanny cgi where they tried to make it look realistic movies like the the christmas carol um i think is that the one that where jim carrey voices scrooge or something i i don't remember but there's like a christmas carol and like a tin tin movie that came out around that time as well that were just very uncanny valley and this falls into that category but, but i still love it it's very very good my favorite christmas movie ever and then we get to two DreamWorks movies, the first of which, Prince of Egypt. This movie goes so unbelievably hard. The visuals, the animation. I think this is DreamWorks' first animated movie. Yeah, the visuals, the animation, the 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 whole like story of everything, the music especially. This is so good. This is it's not one of my favorite animated movies ever, but I think it is objectively one of the best animated movies just ever made in general. Please, please go watch this movie. It's so good. If nothing else, for the music and visuals alone, it's incredible. I love this movie so much. I watched this a lot when I was younger, too. This is one of those, those banger nostalgia movies. Then, we've got another great DreamWorks movie. Well, I've got... Um, We've got the Hunter Trainer Dragon trilogy, but we've got another great DreamWorks movie, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. I have not seen the first Puss in, Puss in Boots movie, nor have I even seen anything past Shrek 2. The only Shrek movies I've seen are Shrek 1, Shrek 2, and this. And I mean, Shrek's not really in this movie at all. He, there's one scene where Puss is like having a flashback and he has a, a, it's like two seconds of Shrek and Donkey and him walking on a bridge doing like the Hakuna Matata thing. But this is I cannot stress them enough how stupidly good this movie is. It has no right being as good as it is. This movie, animation-wise, is mind-blowingly good. They decided to go a different route and make the animation a little bit different. I can't quite describe it. People have described it as sort of Spider-Verse-esque, but I wouldn't even say that. It's not really Spider-Verse-esque because it doesn't feel comic-like like Spider-Verse like Spider does. It's kind of like, uh, it's like a mix of 3D, standard 3D, and like almost cel-shaded. Not quite though. I, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's purely its own thing. I've never seen animation like this before. It is so special. It's so unique. I can't think of a single movie that looks like this. And the story and the music and the characters are all top notch. This is one of the biggest surprises ever. I heard this movie was good. When I saw it in theaters, I did not expect it to be as good as it was. It is just genuinely one of the best animated movies ever made. Please go watch this. This is a masterpiece. This was made by people who really, really know what they're doing with animated movies. And if this is any indication of how good Shrek 5 might be, if the same team is working on Shrek 5, 
I cannot wait for, for Shrek 5. Now I gotta go watch 3 and 4 and like the first Puss in Boots, even though they might not, not be as good. But please, go watch this movie. You don't need to know any Puss in Boots or Shrek lore even. This is a this stands on its own as a masterpiece. Then, the only horror movie to scare me to this day. To still, to still scare me. I, I've been scared by horror movies before. I've kind of been desensitized. But this movie is really scary. Now, let me preface this by saying this is about uh, almost, how long is this? I don't know, like two hours, almost two hours, <clears throat> hour 40, something like that. But anyway, this is like an hour 40 of nothing. Nothing happens in this movie, <laughs> which you might be confused about. But this movie goes purely based off vibes. There is not much that happens in this movie. There is stuff that happens, obviously, but it is the definition of slow burn. If you do not like slow burn, I am stressing, don't watch this movie. This isn't one of those movies that's like, oh, you don't like slow burn, but you'll like this. It's, no, this movie is a slow burn. It drags a lot. However, the atmosphere makes up for it. The overall atmosphere of the movie and the vibes that it gives off are so unsettling, so unnerving, that even as nothing's happening and the camera is pointing still at a wall for five straight minutes, you just you feel tingles up your spine the whole time. The audio design is incredible. The way this is shot is unbelievable. There's maybe two jump scares in the entire movie that I can think of off the top of my head, and they're both so effective because the buildup is like nothing which is weird this is a movie that's not for everybody i think it has like a four point something out of ten on imdb so really it's not for everybody i cannot stress that enough most people will not like this movie i'm just i'm putting it out there please don't go see this if you're if you don't like really slow movies where not much happens but it's amazing it's <laughs> I love it so much. I don't care. It's so good. And then, this is going to be a bit controversial, but I have here the two best Star Wars movies. This is going to be controversial, and I'm sorry if this is controversial, but these are the two best Star Wars movies objectively, not my opinion objectively. <laughs> these are the two best Star Wars movies. Revenge of the Sith, and Rogue One. Let that sink in. Revenge of the Sith and Rogue One. These are the two best Star Wars movies. Okay? Rogue One is a prequel to the original trilogy. If you've seen it, you know. And it, it's, it stars... I don't know what her, what their names are. Oh my goodness, it's it's messed up. I gotta fix this. Uh, I, I didn't mean to say it stars, but I said it. I don't know the people's names. But the main characters are Jin Erso and Cassian Andor, who, you know, is what who Andor is about. It's about Cassian Andor. But their story here is so, so good. This leads up right to the beginning of episode four. This is, it's just, I, I don't know what it is specifically about this movie. But this hits the spot of what I love about Star Wars. And the reason that I bought Andor, even though I haven't seen it, but I bought the 4K Steelbook, is because I love this movie so much. I adore this movie. It's one of the best Star Wars movies. This is I th this this was during Disney Star Wars, right? This is one of the one of the few good things to come out of Yes, th this is after Disney bought Star Wars. This is one of the few good things to come out of Disney Star Wars. This and like the first two seasons of The Mandalorian. I haven't seen season three, so I can't put my opinion in on that. That and like apparently Andor from what I've heard. And even like I would say Force Awakens to some extent, just because of like the pure setup and what could have been with that. Force Awakens is really good. There's some good Disney Star Wars stuff. People like to discredit a lot of Disney Star Wars. This is some good Disney Star Wars. This goes so hard. I don't know if I, I, I probably said it, but this has like the Vader hallway scene. It's just so good. I'm a sucker for prequels, which is why I like Better Call Saul better than Breaking Bad. And this, I like better than the original trilogy because of the way it plays on how you know what's going, like, you know what's going to happen. 
you know generally that everybody in this movie is going to die at the end you know that going into that you know all of that stuff because of the original trilogy and the implications there so seeing how that plays out makes this so special same thing with better call saul you know how saul ends up you know how all of that happens you know how those characters happen but the way that the director in better call saul and here the way that they play on your knowledge of that they don't pretend you're stupid they don't they don't play it like oh you don't know what's going to happen they know that you know what's going to happen they know that you know what the future holds and they use that masterfully same thing with revenge of the sith again i am a sucker for prequels and there you go and this is the best of the prequel trilogy I cannot stress enough how special this movie is. This was, I think, um, probably the first PG-13 movie I saw, and that that was a big event for me <laughs> when I first when I uh, watched my first PG-13 movie. I was like, "Whoa, this is unbelievable!" The storytelling is great. The acting is still great. I don't care. Hayden Christensen played Anakin so well in this movie. Say what you want about not liking his acting. I think he did it so well. And if you watch The Clone Wars and you see some more of the backstory with him and Obi-Wan, it makes this movie better. So watch The Clone Wars. It'll make this movie even better. I read the book of this first before I saw the movie, and that enhanced my viewing of it as well. The book, the novel of Revenge of the Sith, is not only probably the best Star Wars book, but just one of the best books ever, I think. The storytelling in that and the way that the book is able to talk about Anakin's transformation into Vader and how he goes through it and like really his mental state is unbelievably good. I've never read a book like that that gets into somebody's head so well and it makes watching this movie so good because you just, I'm thinking of the book whenever I see this movie because the book is just so good. It's such a good novelization of a movie it makes the movie better bangers bangers best two star wars movies i'm sticking by that i don't care i'm sorry <laughs> i know it's very controversial and then we get to this sweeney todd i used to be a musical guy i was in a bunch of musicals i don't like musicals that much anymore i think it's kind of cringe I just don't like the, the musical community. I just think everyone's annoying and a diva, and I just don't like that. And I haven't done a musical in a long time, but this is a musical done so well. I had to get this. This is part of like a, a bigger collection, but I bought just this one because I don't care about the entire collection of like Paramount horror movies. I just wanted this one. This is so good. This is Johnny Depp, Helena Bonham Carter, uh, Alan Rickman, Whatever the guy's name is, I forgot who plays Peter Pettigrew in Harry Potter. Uh, d other people. Basically, nearly the entire cast of Harry Potter is in this movie. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's so stupidly good. And the guy who plays Anthony, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, the guy who plays Anthony is uh, Vecna in Stranger Things. I, I didn't know that. I knew I recognized Vecna from Stranger Things from somewhere. It's, it's this guy. It's, it's Anthony. It's so good. Th this movie is great. Even if you don't like musicals, please do yourself a favor and watch this. The movie is... No, sorry. The music is top-notch. This is Stephen Sondheim. I don't like musicals anymore, but I like Sondheim. He knows how to write songs so well. The music in this is so good. Sondheim also wrote things like Into the Woods, if you know that. Company. He wrote a bunch of different stuff. But this is his best work, in my opinion. This is Sondheim's best music. They even did the best creative decision choice. Oh, the, this is a Tim Burton film, by the way, so it's it's a banger. Um, but the best creative choice that he made with this movie is taking out the overture from the musical and making it instrumental. The overture is one of the most cringy things I've ever seen in my life, and they turned it into one of the best tracks in the entire musical with the overture to this movie and the opening credits. And that whole sequence is really, really cool. It's like a bunch of, like a CGI shot of like blood flowing through the streets of London. It's so sick. Please watch this movie. Very, very good. Uh, if, you don't know, if you don't know anything about it, it's a musical about a barber who murders people, basically. It's, it's really sick, though. Then we have a, a string of really good Disney and Pixar movies. Starting off with Tangled. This is the movie that kicked off the Disney quirky girl 
uh, phase that they've had since Tangled, basically. And then you've had people like Anna and Moana and uh, what's her name? Mirabelle from Encanto and, and Encanto and people like that that are trying to imitate what Rapunzel did in this movie. But here it makes the most sense. It's done the best. The the overall like the CGI of this movie is still top notch to this day. It still looks better than most movies. I think Disney reached a peak here and they have not reached these heights ever since. This is one of the best Disney movies. I think maybe my favorite, no, not my favorite non, non Pixar Disney movie, but definitely my favorite Disney princess movie. Please, if you've not seen this, again, I, I'd say that for all these movies. Well, most of them, not Skinner Rink, but if you've not seen Tangled, please, it's it's so worth a watch. This is one of those movies that gets better with age. The The longer that I go between viewings and I go back and I watch it again, and like I'm older, this is one of the movies you watch when you're older and you're like, wow, this is like a really well done all ages family movie that's still enjoyable for adults. It's it's a masterpiece. It's just that plain and simple. It's a masterpiece. And then we get, this is a movie that I, that holds a special place in my heart, mainly because I saw this movie in theaters and right around that time I won an iPod through the library reading program. And I loved that little iPod and I would watch this movie all the time on that little iPod. And this is Toy Story 3 which I think is the best of the trilogy. I only own this one. The other two are okay. Toy Story 2, I watched a ton as a child. I actually wore out the VHS, so everything looks wiggly if you watch the VHS. Pretty sure we trashed it by now. But this is, I think, the best of the trilogy objectively, and it's my new favorite. This is the perfect ending to the Toy Story story. I'm so glad that there's not a four and not a five, and that Toy Story ended here because it's just such a perfect ending to Toy Story and I don't even know what they could do that would be worth it if they ever did any more Toy Story movies because there aren't any other Toy Story movies. It ends here, it's just the trilogy, and it's such a perfect ending with some of the most perfect story beats that a trilogy could ever end with. It's, it's so perfect. I just love this to pieces. Amazing movie. Very nostalgic for me too. Then we reach my favorite non-Pixar Disney movie. Treasure Planet. What can I say? I love movies about father figures, I guess. I don't know. Treasure Planet, Incredibles, Fantastic Mr. Fox. I love movies about troubled dads or father figures finally like discovering what matters in life. And those three movies are all about that, basically. <laughs> this one especially, it's especially hard because it mixes pirates and sci-fi in such a perfect way. It's like pirates with space pirate ships. And it is a, a sci-fi space adaptation of Treasure Island, but it's Treasure Planet. And it has the same story beats basically as Treasure Island. So if you know how Treasure Island goes, you basically know how this goes, but it's a Disney-fied version of it. This has some of the best music in any Disney movie. It's one of the most underrated Disney movies of all time. This is another one like John Carter that Disney tried to make fail. Disney wanted this to flop. However, it didn't. It stood the test of time. It's a cult classic. If you've seen it, you know how good it is. It's just such a good movie. Everything about it is just peak Disney. I can't praise this enough. Unbelievably good movie. Then we've got this. This movie is a little bit. Um, it's weird. Because this movie took a while for me to really love it. I enjoyed it when I first saw it in theaters when it dropped in 2008. But it it took me a while to really appreciate this movie and this is wally -E. this is the criterion collection version of wally -E. same like uh same version as fantastic mr fox they do a lot of really cool packaged versions of these movies there's not a ton of movies in the criterion collection but it's so good so it says here like the Criterion Collection is dedicated to gathering the greatest films from around the world and publishing them in editions of the highest technical quality with supplemental features that enhance the appreciation of the art of the film. This movie has like a little art book on the inside of it. It's got so many, like look, these are all the bonus features. This is listing all the bonus features in the movie. There's so much bonus feature stuff in this movie. I haven't actually dived into this edition yet. I'm really excited to check out all of this. 
But this movie holds a very special place in my heart now because when I first saw this, I, I saw the environmental message, which sure, that's all well and good. And it's like, okay, yeah, save the planet. That's cool. And then I didn't think much of it. But when I come back to this as an adult and not as a 10 year old, because when the movie came out in 2008, I was 10. When I come to this as an adult, I see that it's not as much about the environmental message as it is about pure human connection and that connection that we as human beings have with other people. And I don't think that there is any movie that does that as well as this. And it does it the best with two things that aren't even human. It creates a whole narrative about human connection and the the need that we have for love and companionship and just having other people that care for us using robots. And like 80% of this movie doesn't even have dialogue in it mostly. It's, it's mostly just robots. There is some dialogue when they get to the ship later on in the movie and there's like the people. Um, but the heart of the movie is that human connection. And this movie does it better than any other movie I've seen. This is undoubtedly a masterpiece. One of Pixar's best. I don't think it's quite as good as the, as the Incredibles. I think that's their best. But this is, I think, their second best. This is one of the best movies of all time. And I'm so happy that I have the, the Criterion Collection version of it, which is like a 4K really cool box set with an art book and everything. It's, it's really cool having this. Then we get to this next movie. This is one that I did not watch when it first came out. I knew about it. I read the book adaptation of it. It's based off of a children's book, um, but the movie is really not much like the book. It has some similarities, but the book is like 10 pages long and the movie's an hour and a half. And I got this recently because I saw a screenshot from it and I said, that is the perfect fall aesthetic. I need to own this movie and I need to watch it. I don't care if it's any good or not. I just need to have it for the vibes alone. And this movie surprised me more than maybe any other movie did ever. This is where the wild things are. I went into this movie with zero expectations. I just liked the fall aesthetic. I liked the foresty kind of vibes and like a bunch of creatures in the forest. This movie blew me away. The storytelling in this movie is second to none. The story is unbelievable. What happens throughout the way that it progresses, the way that it resolves, it doesn't go the way that you expect. And it does it in the best way. And the message of it makes you really think. And I have thought about this movie a lot since the first time I watched it. And it's just one of my favorite movies of all time now. I think I would put this in like maybe top 10, maybe top five even. It's so good. The overall visuals are just really good too. This came out like 2010 or something. And this is 2009, yeah. And the CGI here on the creatures is unbelievable. It's people in suits and the faces are, are CGI animated in post. And because of that, they feel so real. The creatures, for a 2009 like live action movie adaptation of a children's book, it did not need to go this hard. It is unbelievably good. I can't praise this movie enough. Everything about it is top-notch. The visuals, the story, the voice acting. This is another stacked cast with the voice acting. Uh, Catherine Keener, Mark Ruffalo, uh, James Gandolfini, Catherine O'Hara, Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, there's a lot of people in here. Again, this is another one, just like Fantastic Mr. Fox. This is another movie where it's a celebrity voice cast, but they really earn their place. It doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel like they just got celebrities to get the celebrities. They really nailed the voices in this voice acting for like all of the all of the wild things creatures incredible movie the soundtrack as well is a banger and the way this movie ends left me like stunned not because it's like a big shocking twist or anything but just because i can't believe that they had the guts to end the movie that way it's so well done it's really really incredible you need to do yourself a favor and watch this if you haven't. We're almost at the end, don't worry. Then these three movies I'm going to kind of lump together because they're not really a continuation of each other or a trilogy or anything, but they're just three movies that are part of the same overall universe and the same story. 
and I really just love them. They hold a lot of nostalgia for me. These are Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and Timothy Chalamet Wonka. Let's start with this one. This is the 1971 Gene Wilder Willy Wonka. This movie is kind of crazy. <laughs> It's very wacky. It's very different. It's very, it's, it's strange. It, it's weird. Willy Wonka was the first musical that I ever did when I was like 10 or 11. And I played Willy Wonka when I was like 10 or 11. My mom just put on a community theater thing with neighborhood kids. And it was done like in our living room. And then they walked around to our sunroom in the backyard for like the Wonka's factory second act part of it. And this movie just holds a very special place in my heart because of that. I really, really like this. And then this one, actually, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, 10th Anniversary Edition. This one, I think, is probably, arguably better than the Gene Wilder one. But the Gene Wilder one, I think, is more charming. It's really hard it, to pick one. It's a toss-up for me between these two. But it's still very, very good. And then Wonka acts as like an origin story to Gene Wilder's version. Again, very, very good. It's very well done. The music is great. It's just such a good movie. All these movies, they're not like one of the best movies of all time. I wouldn't put these up in my favorite movies ever, but they're just so charming and they've got such a, such a nice, happy feeling to them. You know, so that's, that's why I love these so much. And then finally, we got Whiplash. We got Whiplash. This is a nice one to end on because it's music themed. It's about a jazz drummer and, uh, What's his name? I can't believe I forgot his name. J.K. Simmons being mean. <laughs> it's just, it's such a good movie. It's really well done. It's really well acted. It's just a, a, a solid movie about music. I don't know. It's it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a good movie. If you are a musician and you haven't seen Whiplash, what are you doing? Watch this movie. It's, it's very, very, very good. And that's all I got to say about it though, really. Okay. Uh, I think that's everything that I got in this new setup. An hour and 21 minutes currently on the recording. I'm probably going to edit some stuff down to make it a little bit more concise. But yeah, that's about everything I got. Oh, I also have... I also got my clarinet, too. And then around the corner, uh, you can kind of see it over there. But around the corner, there is my guitar and my violin. I just have them tucked over there. But that is about it. That's everything I got going on with this new setup. So now you see everything I have. You see all the stuff I got, except some of the books I didn't talk about. It doesn't matter. It's got some other random stuff on the shelf, too, that I have to clean up. But that's everything of importance that matters. I, I hope this was interesting. I hope it was fun just hearing me rant about things that I enjoy. I hope somebody watches this whole video. And yeah, I'll see you all in my next one. Thanks for checking this out. Hope you like the new setup. I'm going to fix this up further because this is not my new desk. I'm getting a desk from my mom's house that she has she doesn't need anymore. And I think I'm going to take this desk and I'm going to put this like here against the wall. And I'm going to have this desk here and then another one jutting out where this desk is. So this will just be shifted over a little bit. And then I think I'm going to put the camera from here and have it pointing this way so it'll come at like an angle. And then I'll put my piano on this desk that'll be turned and you can like see me play piano and all that stuff. I'll figure it out as we go along. I don't know when I'm going to get that desk because she still has to clean stuff out of it, but whatever, who cares? Anyway, the setup is going to change a little bit, but not much. This is going to just be the future of my channel setup. Basically, I'm going to clean some of this up, make it a little more presentable. But overall, that's basically what we got going on here. So thanks for watching, and I will catch you all in my next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.